It's been nearly a decade since Universal Pictures opened their own animation production under the name Illumination Entertainment, and their debut film about a former supervillain raising a family became not only one of the biggest animated film franchises in history, but also having one of their films to be the first ever animated film outside of Disney to surpass a billion dollars at the box office. And while the studio also had a fantastic year in 2016 with two films that both became successful enough to be franchises of their own, Illumination still have plans for the franchise that started it all with their latest chapter, Despicable Me 3. After getting fired of failing to bring Balthazar Brat behind bars, Gru and his family were invited by his long-lost twin brother Drew, who persuades him to go back to his evil roots. Excuse me. <sighs> hey, could you? Oh, uh, of course. Now, as I was saying, I, uh, oh. Goodbye. <laughs> I've actually started to notice a pattern in these Despicable Me films of Gru having a relationship with particular characters in each film. The first one where he grew a bond with the three orphan girls who eventually were adopted by him. The second, we had a lovely relationship with Lucy, who eventually become his wife. And now in this film, Gru has to get along with his long-lost twin brother. With that said, the movies have always found creative ways to balance that formula with tons of action, chase sequences, cool spy gadgets, and especially the comedy. And after watching this film, I'm more than happy to say that this third installment has spectacularly carries on that tradition. There were so many moments that I just couldn't stop laughing so hard. There were even some gags that felt like it would make you cringe on paper, yet somehow they've managed to make them outrageously hilarious in execution. Another thing that made the Despicable Me film so fun to watch are the characters, both old and new. Gru is still the devious yet lovable guy. Lucy is wonderful as she tries to grow a bond with the three girls. Drew is surprisingly funny as the bungling polar opposite of his twin brother. And of course, what's the Despicable Me movie without the minions? This time with Mel taking the lead. Although they have their own little adventure away from Gru, they still have their moments to shine. I would never have expected them to do a funny rendition of a timeless song from the Pirates of Penzance. And finally, there's the main villain, Balthazar Brad, a former 80s child star who after losing his role went on to become a jewel thief based on his character. As much as some would say that he's just a generic supervillain, his origin story and his awesome gadgets, such as an instant inflating bubblegum and exploding Rubik's Cube, as well as his wicked dance steps, he is definitely a memorable bad guy. You know, given the fact that we had a creator of Family Guy voice a saxophone playing mouse in the previous film, and now we have one of the creators of South Park voice an 80s style supervillain in this film, Illumination must have this habit of casting creators of adult animated series in their films. I guess we'll expect to have Seth Green or Justin Roiland to be cast in future projects. Overall, I'm glad to see that the franchise that put Illumination on the map is still going strong, and I highly recommend to anyone who enjoyed the first two films, or for anyone looking for a film that's full of non-stop action. It's funny that before watching it, I thought it would end my journey with Gru and his family from there, but after watching it, I wouldn't mind to go on another round with them. And then again, there is going to be another Minions movie coming out in the future, so I'm still looking forward to it. This movie is another solid gold nugget on the silver screen. <laughs>